Hello and welcome back to the channel, I'm EVM uh, and this video is about the recent, um, well today's announcement from the budget about electric car VED rates or car tax as most people tend to refer to it as um, changing and what's happening, what I think about it, blah blah blah. Now just before we get on to that, this is a, a bit of a, a trial really, a bit of a test bed because I'm thinking if anything like this happens in future, whether it's home energy related, EV related, of course, or just something that's interesting uh, regarding the channel, for example, then I'll do an extra video about it. No more than one a week. I don't want to you know, spam the channel or anything like that. But if anything happens, then do a video rather than just rely on the regular Friday upload. So I want to know what you think. Are you happy with seeing this? I don't want to clutter up people's subscription um, YouTube panels or anything like that. Um, you can upload too much. So yeah, it's just a bit of a, a trial. And let me know what you think, essentially. I think uh, it could be, as I said, at most once a week, probably gonna be every two or three weeks because if nothing interesting happens then nothing gets uploaded. Should I leave this for members only? I'll pay 99p as an added benefit because most people aren't really bothered about this. Again, it's just me talking to my phone in a completely unedited fashion about a single topic. There's no whiteboard, there's no car review with anything like that. If it's interesting, I'll put it up. If it's new, if it's news, I'll do this. Um, so again, let me know. Right, let's get on with the topic at hand, and that is the vehicle excise duty rates, which has just been announced in today's budget, and yet another budget. Effectively, you're going to be paying car tax or VED rate from April 2025 20, onwards if you own an electric vehicle, including ones that you have now today. So my, <coughs> excuse me, my Tesla Model 3 2020, that will um, cost me £165 a year from April 2025 onwards when it comes to uh, v VED. I'll call it car tax because it's a lot easier. I know, you know what I mean. Um, anything over, I think, from 2017 onwards. In fact, let me read what the government page states. From April 2025, electric cars, vans, and motorcycles will begin to pay VED in the same way as petrol and diesel vehicles. New zero emission cars registered on or after the 1st of April 2025 will be liable to pay the lowest first year rate of VED. At the moment, that's £10. Uh, for the second year of registration onwards, they will move to the standard rate, which is currently £165 a year very much like uh, the cleanest, if you will, petrol or diesel car. Zero emission cars first registered between 1st of April 2017 and 31st of March 2025 will also pay the standard rate. I'm assuming any car before 2017 doesn't pay any VED at all, but it doesn't actually specify that on the government website, at least not yet. Now that, there's one other thing which I'll, I need to mention, uh, one other change, that, for me, I don't think that's going to make a major difference. If someone says, do you want to buy a 25, 35, 50, 60, 80, £100,000 car, I don't think £165 a year is going to make any difference whatsoever, even on a, a existing cars. I don't really have a problem with paying that. You know, We knew it was coming at some point. You're not going to have the incentive of free tax uh, forever. And like I said, £165 quid a year. If you keep your car three years, it's not really a big deal, is it? Certainly not when you think how much the car costs you. Uh, there's a few people out there saying, don't mind paying tax as an electric vehicle owner, but it still needs some incentivization. So it should at least be cheaper than petrol diesel, but don't mind paying something. I, I think, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm not bothered, quite frankly. 165 quid is, you know, I think fair. Now there is another change which I think will affect at least some sales or have an effect on the market. That I don't think will affect sales at all. But another change is the expensive car supplement or luxury tax as it used to be called, uh, exemption for electric vehicles is due to end in 2025. So basically, if you buy a new EV registered on or after 1st of April again, 2025, you will therefore be liable for the expensive car supplement um, which currently applies to cars with a list price, and that's including options, I believe, exceeding £40,000 for the first five years of its life. 
which is what's been on petrol cars for quite some time. So if you bought EV6s, uh, most Ionic 5s, let's face it, most EVs that are coming out are above 40 grand at the moment. Every Tesla, for example, there's a few people calling this a Tesla tax. Then you'll be paying 165 plus this luxury supplement, which means that for the first five years of its life, you're paying around, well, over 500 pounds. That's going to have an effect, even though logically, that uh, that extra 300 and was it 50 60 quid a year on top of the normal rate you're only looking at what 16 1700 quid over five years on a 40 50 60 70 80 thousand pound car not a big deal but it has a psychological effect my uh, tt roadster which is 17 18 years old that never leaves the garage that's 300 and odd pounds in tax if i bought one that was about six months newer so 2006 April onwards, I think it is, it's about 610 quid tax. So it's double the tax effectively. Those go, if you can find one anyway, because they're quite rare, rare now, those go for, I reckon, 20, 30% less than an equivalent cheaper tax version. So it, it, it clearly affects people's patterns on the used market that, that they think, well, I'm paying 600 quid a year. That's like insurance again, or, or you know, it's a big bill. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not. So for me, that will have an effect. There's going to be a, a flood of people wanting to get their cars in just before April 2025. In fact, if you have a 74 reg car, which would be 1st of April 24 to the 31st of March 25, that's going to carry a premium for a few years at least, because that will be, let's imagine you're buying a Tesla, 165 quid a year, if you get a 70, what would be a 2025 April registered car, that would be what, 25 reg? That will be 500 non quid for the first few years. That will make, I reckon a 74 reg car will hold its value and be worth the same as a 75 reg car, even, a year, even though it's a year newer, because of that tax, at least for a few years of its life, of course. So I suppose the uh, the take home from that would be if you're ordering an over £40,000 EV, look at you, if you're doing that, then you probably want to order it within the next 18 months because we're nearly in 2023. It could take a year for any car to arrive, even by then, which means you've got probably less than 18 months or 18 months-ish to order one that won't have a big tax bill attached to it. And that will probably depreciate more than the cheaper tax one, as I said. So, yeah, it's not a major difference to car EV land, but it is uh, something that I think we've all been expecting for quite some time. I have no problems, as I said, in paying car tax or BED. It's uh, something that's, I think, yeah, I think it's quite fair. The luxury tax thing again. Uh, yeah, it's fair. If you can afford £40,000 for a car, you can afford the extra uh, luxury car tax. Uh, or Tesla tax, I quite like that. Um, the trouble is, most EVs coming out right now are all above 40 grand. They're all big SUVs with massive batteries. So I wonder if it's going to have an effect on uh, on the models they bring out. I do genuinely, as a, I can't remember if I said, said earlier, but I, I do genuinely think that will be a lot of £39,999 cars coming out in a couple of years, um, as they used to do when the uh, grant was around, you know, when, when they lowered the grant to 40,000, was it, or 35, then all of a sudden a few cars appeared just under that barrier. So that's going to happen. Um, hopefully it'll make a few uh, cars cheaper. Who knows? So there we go. That's what's happened. Uh, and let me know what you think about this in the comments, of course, the BED rate changing, but also about this type of video. I can do this really easily. I can literally come home from work, whack my phone on, there's no editing necessary, I can upload it straight to YouTube from my phone, I just need to do a bit of thumbnail stuff on the on the uh, laptop and then I'm done. So should this be for members only as, a, as an added little perk, because it's not that great a video is it, or stick it for everybody, <clears throat> in terms of, uh, you know, like this video, it's for the public if you will, uh, or, or what, let me know, I need your feedback, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, I've already filmed this once before, but my laptop fan was going in the background. So there's a few tweaks to be made. Um, but yeah, if anything happens, 
you know, for example, if we're at a car event in, uh, you know, that, that's interesting enough, I might do a quick little snippet or something like that. But I don't want to spam the channel. I don't want to do more than one a week um, on top of the normal Friday upload anyway. So, you know, you, you can do too much. You can make people like, oh, God, not, not another one. My subscription sort of feed is, is just full of this person's videos and then you unsubscribe. So let me know what you think uh, and whether or not I should continue this sort of stuff. I probably will for members as a minimum, uh, as an, again, as an added perk. But should it be public or not? Let me know. Right, I'm done. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. I've missed the off button. <laughs> Bye.